and afraid I'd come be On a hippie trail head full of zombies I met a strange lady, she made me nervous She took me in and gave me breakfast And she said, do you come from a land down on the A women glow and men thunder Can't you hear, can't you hear that thunder You better run, you better take cover Bosco from Bosco and the Honey. Who would have thought we'd run across him in the Karanda? And there he was. Thanks, Bosco. You're welcome. Karanda. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm Ukulele Jay and today I'm here at the Shangri-La Hotel in Cairns, Australia and we're going on a tour of Bear River guitars and ukuleles right here in Cairns with Alan McFarlane. Hope you enjoy and thanks for watching. A little bit of rain, huh, Alan? Oh, that's a sprinkler. It's a sprinkle. Hi, everybody. I'm Ukulele Jay. Today, I'm here in Cairns, Australia, with a wonderful luthier, Alan McFarland, of Barren River Guitar and Ukulele. Uh, many of you have seen the stunning and amazing Tiger Myrtle Ukulele that Alan built me. Uh, it's been, boy, I think a year and a half ago, probably by now. And uh, I'm here looking at his wood pile and deciding uh, what I'm going to be using for my next ukulele, which I'll keep a secret until it's uh, ready to go. But uh, I want to thank him for his uh, gracious hospitality today. Wonderful Cairns, Australia. It's a beautiful place. If you haven't visited here, it's a place you definitely should put on your list. A lot of uh, uke activities throughout Australia in the coming months. Unfortunately, I won't be here for the upcoming festival. I think I just missed a couple in... Uh, in Sydney and Melbourne, but uh, it's definitely a uke world here in Australia compared to the United States, uh, just as popular it seems. And today we're here with Alan, so I wanted to ask him a few questions. Alan, thanks a lot for having me at your wonderful shop in your home today. I appreciate the hospitality. Yeah, it was great to have you around. Thanks. Uh, how, how many years have you been building guitars and ukuleles? Uh, eight years now. Eight years. Yeah. And would you say that the uh, Uke World has overtaken the guitar world as far as requests for building custom instruments right now for you? Certainly for my business, uh, Ukes are probably 95% of my work now. And who would you say is ordering the most from the, the ukulele world here in Australia? Is it Aussies or is it 
people in the U.S., I know overseas, uh, I would, Asia? I would say probably 50% of my work is Australia, 30-35% um, out of the U.S., and then the rest is split up between Europe and Asia. And out of all the ukulele sizes that you're making today, are there a particular percentage of tenor versus soprano concert, baritone? Most are tenor and baritone now. Um, the ones going to Asia tend to be concerts, and um, I get a lot of inquiries about gitalele sizes, uh, but rarely do people actually jump in and, and get one of them. I think they're kicking the tires more than anything. Well, I noticed on the baritones, it seems that a lot of guitar players are moving over to baritone to play in the uke world. Mm. Have you found that to be kind of the experience? Are they mostly guitar people, or are they people that are uke people that want to have their ukes kind of sound like guitars more? What have you found? I think it's 50% each way. I get a lot of people coming from guitar that have had um, classical training and are uncomfortable with a large classical style guitar. Most of them are elderly and just want something a little bit more comfortable to play and then can't believe how much fun playing a small instrument is. And then the other ones are ukulele players looking for a fuller, deeper sound after they've been in sopranos and concerts, they want a larger body instrument. Do you have any requests specifically for re-entrant tuned ukuleles versus linear tuned ukuleles in, in that most people want a low G or a high G or is it a mixture? It's, it's really a mixture and uh, I tell them that for instruments from tenors and baritones, they can really go either way. I don't like to um, recommend that they can go with a low G on a soprano or a concert because I just don't feel that my instruments support that in that tuning too much, though I have lots of customers that put them on and say they sound great. So if they're happy with it, I'm happy. Now when you make a ukulele, do you ask the individual if they want specifically a re-entrant tune or a low G, and does that really change any of the, any of the uh, structure as far as how you cut the nut on the ukulele and build the instrument? When I take a custom um, order for an instrument, we work out exactly what the client is looking for, whether um, they want a bright bright forward sound or a nice natural woody sound. That determines a lot on the top that I'll recommend for them. Then um, we go through a lot of things on what they're looking for, what they like, what they don't like, and very definitely it's do you want it a low G or a high G. There's not really anything structurally different about the instrument short of when it comes to the intonation of the instrument, we change the way the saddle is shaped a little bit depending on the string choice. But that saddle is intonated for the strings I put on the time. If they change them, it may work, it may not. Now you have a wonderful wife, Karen, she's back here. I think she just walked by out of the frame of our video. But uh, how does she take all the time you spend in the shop? You obviously, uh, you work, you have a job. Um, I don't think most people know that you're not doing this. You're doing it 40 hours a week, but it's not your 40 hour a week job. You have another job like some other Luthers out there. Yeah. So you're really kind of doing double duty. Yeah. Um, how, does that, how does that work with, with your wife and, and time being in the shop versus home life? Well, we do have work schedules that sort of don't coincide with each other. So I get to be out here a lot of time when she's not at home. So she doesn't really miss me then. <laughs> and on the weekends uh, where I'm out here 10, 12 hours uh, each day, Saturday and Sunday, she sometimes comes out and has a chat with me, maybe brings me a sandwich, a beer at the end of the day. But she likes to take care of our gardens, which you can see are pretty yes. well a full-time job. Fantastic gardens. Yeah. I've got some video and some photos you'll see in the, uh, the video of that too. They have a wonderful property, beautiful flowers, lots of birds around here as well. But um, what, what, what's the, the thing you really enjoy the most about what you do here at your shop and building? For me, it's rather meditative. It's my art. I get to, um, I'm really lucky that most of my clients will tell me vaguely what they want and then they say, you're the expert, um, have free reign. So I get to go through all my wood, um, use my creative ideas on each and every instrument. I do my utmost not to make two identical instruments and each one I'm you know, stretching my skills, trying to make the next one a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Always striving to improve. And for me, that's where the joy of this is. Well, let me, uh, I want to show somebody real quick here. Um, a lot of people didn't believe that I was going to bring my ukulele all the way to Australia, but um, 
I wanted to just show some people um, your work. And this is actually uh, my Barren River. It's well played. And this is the, uh, the tiger myrtle uh, from Tasmania, I believe. Yes. And Alan picked this up out of his pile. Um, I don't think if you're requesting me, you'll be getting some. I think this is uh, out of stock. Uh, out of stock right now. Out of stock right now. And uh, it's just a fantastic instrument. And for those of you that are watching this that were at the uh, Uke Jam by the Bay in San Francisco, you got a chance to uh, pick it up and play it and take a look at it. But fantastic instrument. Um, his work is just wonderful. And uh, I think if you get a chance to take a look at his website, you'll definitely find something that you'll like here at Bear River a Guitar and Ukulele. And I actually am going to be picking out, I think, a Blackwood we talked about, mm -hmm. uh, baritone that will be tuned in uh, GCEA as well. And for those of you that um, have any questions about uh, Bear River ukuleles, you can contact Alan at brguitars.com and my email address is a-l-l-e-n at brguitars.com. Great. Well, thanks, Alan, for uh, accommodating me today. Uh, his wonderful wife as well it was fantastic. We had some snacks, some good beer, and, uh, and good times. So for those of you that are coming out to Cannes and want to meet at Luthier that builds incredible custom ukuleles, make sure to contact Alan McFarlane at Barren River Guitar and Ukulele. Thanks for watching. You've been with Thank us you. most of the time now? Yeah, because um, right here in my body mold, these are very, very tight bends. Very difficult to um, do with the silicon heat blanket uh, without is a much more shape like that. Pretty good, huh? Yeah, just try it on the form. See how much more we have to go. One mil thick. 2.1 mil thick. Yep. That's huh. a little thick for a top. Right. But, but it's um like if Tony would have a drum sander. So if it's when you get to the point of um, wanting to build it, I would take it down to say two mil, 1.8 to two mil. Perfect.